Let's go over really quickly the ohm meter function, specifically on a, on a DVOM. We've got uh, a run-of-the-mill DVOM here, and we want to measure the resistance of these two bulbs that we have here in front of us. Okay, and they are different. We want to see how much resistance is there, or how much resistance each one of these things have. Now, an ohm meter is really good for measuring resistance of components such as light bulbs and uh, motors and other things like that. Not good for measuring resistance of wires. So you need to keep that out of your mind that you can measure the resistance of wiring with an ohm meter. All right, it just is not effective and does not work all that well. So we're not going to do that. The reason we don't do that is because the way the ohm meter works is it uses its own little battery inside to run a little tiny bit of current down the red wire up through the end of the, the red lead and then it looks for a path back to the black lead. Okay, well it, it finds the path and then flows back to the meter and then the meter makes a calculation of resistance based on how that current is modified or how that, that tiny little bit of voltage um, is modified. And that's essentially how the ohm meter takes its reading. Well, if you are trying to measure the resistance in something that draws a lot of current, like a, a power window circuit or something like that, a power window a power window motor might draw seven or eight amps. And in order to flow seven or eight amps, you have to have good connections and good wiring. Well, if you've got bad connections somewhere in that wiring, you're not going to flow seven or eight amps. But you could flow the tiny little bit of current that comes from the meter. So essentially, the meter is not going to see a problem, and it's going to say everything is good. So we're gonna, but we are going to measure the resistance of these bulbs because it is it is good for that. So I'm going to turn the meter on to the ohm scale or the ohm setting, and that is almost always um, almost always labeled with the the Greek letter omega. All right, I'm going to push touch one lead to one side of the bulb and the other lead to the other side of the bulb. And that's really it. So you can see there on our, our meter it says 1.7 ohms. So that's how much resistance is in that bulb. If we try the other bulb, it shows we have 5.3 ohms, okay? Which uh, is to be expected. This smaller bulb is not as bright. It has more resistance, so it doesn't flow as much current. So we have 5.4 ohms. Now we would want to, if we were really concerned about the resistance of this component, we'd want to check our specifications to see if 5.4 falls in specifications. And since this is just a bulb, yeah, that's fine. And of course on the big one, having 1 1.7, is that good? Yeah, that's good. Now if this bulb was burned out, what we would see is this. We would see OL because the filament would be broken. There'd be no path for that little bit of current that comes from the meter to return, and we would just see OL. If we touch the ends of the leads together, then we get essentially zero ohms. Sometimes it kind of fluctuates between something real low. But um, that means no resistance. Now, we should never get zero ohms confused with OL because OL literally means infinite resistance. Some people say OL stands for over limit or maybe out of luck, but it means infinite resistance. If we have zero, that doesn't mean infinite resistance. That means no resistance. So they are complete opposites of each other. But it's pretty common for people to get those two confused, the, the zero ohms and the OL. So zero ohms means we have continuity um, with, with almost no resistance, and OL means we have infinite resistance and no continuity. So don't get those things confused. Another thing that can be confusing is on the ohm meter, sometimes we'll look at components that have a very, very high amount of resistance. Like you see right here, this little M, uh, it's, a, it's a uppercase M, that's the symbol for mega ohms. Sometimes you might test the resistance of a component and you see something like 3.7 mega ohms. Well, what that really means is 3.7 million ohms. So that means, yeah, there's continuity, but with a huge, huge amount of resistance. And when you have that much resistance in any kind of electrical circuit, chances are, you know, the circuit's open. 
the current from the, the little meter might actually be finding a way back to where it came from. So we do get a reading on the, on the, the display in megohms. But a megohm reading is essentially the same as an OL reading. There's really not too much difference there. Now we also see ohm readings in kilo ohms or k ohms. One kilo ohm has, is a thousand ohms. So if we see 10 kilo ohms, that's 10,000 ohms of resistance. That's quite a bit. But there's a lot of components out there that have resistance that is somewhere in that neighborhood. Now if we take a diff some different something different here, let's move our bulbs out of the way. We have some resistors here, and these resistors have varying amounts of resistance, and we can see what that looks like. If we check the first one, okay, about 100 ohms. All right, pretty straightforward. We check the second one. Now it says 0.992, but that's not ohms. That's 0.992 kilo ohms, and remember there's 1,000 ohms in one kilo ohm. Okay, so that's, we're just shy of a thousand ohms. We'll go to the last resistor. Okay, this says 9.9 .9 kilo ohms. So we're just shy of 10,000 ohms in that resistor. And that's good. This is a 10,000 ohm resistor. That's a thousand ohm resistor, and this is a hundred ohm resistor. You know, and there's, there's a certain amount of tolerance built into, built into any resistor. So those resistors are are all good. But anyway, just a little bit on using an ohm meter to measure ohms. Uh, make sure you don't make the mistake of trying to measure the the ohms of a wire. It can be done. It just it just it, it just doesn't mean anything other than yeah, you have continuity. But having continuity and not having any resistance uh, in a wire are two completely different things.